Hey there, it's Tim from Organic Backyard Gardening. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use soil blocks to easily start seedlings. If you're looking for a new, easy way to start your plants stronger with less waste, this video is perfect for you. I'll also share my recipe, how to make soil blocks, and demonstrate how to up-pot them from two inch to four inch blocks. Soil blocking is really an ingenious way of seed starting. The method allows you to produce vigorous seedlings with roots that quickly re-establish growth upon transplanting. It eliminates expense, waste, and storage issues associated with plastic pots. With soil blocks, each seedling comes with its own undisturbed root ball, enabling the transplants to become established very quickly into their new home. Roots of container-grown seedlings encircle the container's inner surface, whereas roots grown in soil blocks air prune themselves at the block's surface because of the separation between the blocks. On transplanting, the soil block's roots extend immediately into the new surroundings and establish themselves days sooner than the container-grown plants that have to learn how to stop circling. To get started with soil blocking, it all starts with getting a soil blocking tool. The two inch soil blocks are perfect size, which I'm starting all my seedlings in this year. The maker makes four blocks at once. While it may seem a little pricey at $44, it's worth the investment and built to last a lifetime. Now you also can get the four inch blocking tool, which will allow you to up pot the two inch blocks into the four inch block. I'm using the 4-inch blocks to up-pot my tomatoes. The 4-inch block is really expensive and costs $109. The next thing you'll need is a bucket and some sturdy trays to hold the blocks. If you're doing this outside, that's probably the easiest thing to make your mix in a wheelbarrow. Several different recipes you can use. I made this one up and it seems to work well. I use one part Costa Maine lobster compost. This is for the nutrients. and one part peat moss. Peat has long fibers and adds structure to the overall block. Half part vermiculite for water retention. And a little bit of blood meal for some extra nitrogen. So here's a recap of the recipe, but don't worry, I'll put these details in the description below, as well as links to all the products I'm discussing. Then add water and mix. You're gonna wanna add more water than you typically do when you're making your seed starting soil for regular cells. And it's okay if you get this soil a little bit too wet because the soil blocks, while you're making them, they're gonna squeeze the liquid out. So in this example, I'm making a large block. It's the same case for making the two inch blocks. You're first gonna to wanna to take the soil and shove it into the top of the block maker. It's kinda of like making a sand castle. You wanna make sure that all the sand goes into the top of the mold so you have a nice castle at the top. If you don't do this, I've noticed that the top of the blocks I'll come out a little deformed if they don't have all of the soil pushed up into the top area. Next you're going to want some really sturdy trays. Blocks are much heavier than your normal cell packs. Now since I'm starting the larger 4 inch blocks here, I'm not going to be starting seeds in them and putting my 2 inch block tomatoes in them. Now the 2 inch blocks have a little divot in the top and this allows a little area where you can put the seed. After you put the seeds into the divot, you can just take a little bit of fine vermiculite and sprinkle it over the seed to cover it. This makes the process a lot faster. Now there is one more soil block size, it's the micro. And if you use the micro to start your seeds, you can use the two inch blocks to up pot those. And the divot can be replaced with a little indentation so it accepts the micro. Okay, so now it's the next day and I'm making more outside and I've made all of these and I found a trick to make sure that the rim stays intact. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I found it's much easier just to mix a large batch in the wheelbarrow. And like I said before, just push it in to make sure it's all up around that collar. Okay, 
and you want to push it so that at least some liquid comes out the top. And then to make sure that you get the rim intact, just place it down. If you want to come up on the top, look what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to push it down a little bit and you can see this wiggles. Pull it up slightly, but keep wiggling it. Let up. Keep wiggling. Keep wiggling. Let up. And that leaves the rim nice and tacked. That has a nice little structure. You want to keep your soda blocks moist and well hydrated. I water them daily or every other day and I put about an inch of water into the tray and the soil blocks will absorb all of the water. What's really amazing is I up potted these on Saturday and today is Tuesday and these tomatoes I feel have almost doubled in size since then. If you found this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Click that bell icon too because we're going to be posting a lot of videos this growing season that you don't want to miss out on and if you need help planning your spring garden check out planmygarden.com so enter your zip code, draw your garden layout, select what vegetables you want to grow and how much space you want to allocate to each. Check out and then we'll send you an email with a PDF that has a visual schedule for each vegetable you selected, a getting started guide, a grow guide for each vegetable selected, and your garden layout updated with optimal plant placements for maximum yields. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. You might be interested in this video on the left, how to transplant your seedlings the right way into the garden, or this video on the right, which is my most recent.